Hey my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm gonna show you how to use the Asset Manager in Affinity Photo. And throughout the video, of course, I'm gonna give you some of my secret songs on how to use it more effectively and have more fun with that. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria, and I wanna thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Thank you for that. Let's switch over to Affinity Photo and there we are. So the first thing you can see here is a bunch of speech bubbles. And this is the first way because there are three, basically three ways on how you can use the Asset Manager. And if you wonder where is the Asset Manager because you can't find it in your Affinity Photo, you have to go to View and then to Studio and here it says Assets. This is basically the Asset Manager. So click on that and it will pop up for you. Maybe it's over here. You can put it wherever you want. So I can also put it over here, but I will leave it as a separate window so you can see more clearly what I am doing. Uh, by the way, I'm going to delete real quick this category so we can create it again uh, so you can actually completely watch what I'm doing. So the first way that you can use the Asset Manager is with vector shapes. And the important thing about vector shapes is that they are mathematical shapes so they are not based on pixels and that means you can make them as big as possible and they will always keep their sharp outline. So this is the main benefit of a vector shape that it is not related to any kind of size of a picture that can be super useful for example here with these speech bubbles the downside is there is no way to import them right now all together even if they these shapes would be separated out as individual shapes in individual eps files or any kind of other vector file you could not just click and drag them into your asset manager which by the way you can do with png with jpeg with kind of pixel files so First of all, where do you find them? And second of all, how do you add them to your asset manager? The first thing, how do you find them? For example, you can go on a page like free pick and there you have these kind of collections. You can search for them. You can see there's a lot of different kind of things uh, that can, you can use. And of course, not just speech bubbles. You can find flowers or aliens or smileys or whatever you want. Okay. The most important part to understand about a vector is that it's made of different shapes. So when you have one that is made of different shapes, you have to group them first. So let's, for example, look at this speech bubble here. This is made of one, two, three shapes. So you go to your move tool and you click on one shape and then you hold your shift key on the keyboard and click on the second and the third shape. And you can see that they are now all selected together. And now on your keyboard, you uh, press control and G together and this will create a group. And when you look on the right side for your um, layers here, you can see that now I have a group down here. So that is very useful. Okay. So how do I put this into the Asset Manager? Well, you want to first create a category. So you go here to these three little lines, click on that and say create new category. And then you probably want to rename that. So let's click again on the three lines and we want to rename that. I will call it Vector Shapes. Vector Shapes, there we go. Okay, and now let's correct that because the E is also big. There we go. Boom. Okay. It comes with a subcategory that says assets and you can add as many subcategories as you want. And we will use that in a second with the secret sauce. But first we want to add these uh, shapes here. So let's not get ahead of us. Um, so here it says assets and you have three little lines next to that too. So you can click on that and you can rename that. So I can uh, call it color bubbles. Wow, uh, let's speech bubbles. There we go. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Good. So now what you have to do, and this is a little bit tedious, I'm sorry about that. Um, you have to go here. So you select either your shape or your group of shapes and you go here and say add from selection. And you do it with 
each of these shapes and be careful that the shape is not actually made of several different shapes otherwise you have to group them together and you can see how easy it is how fast it is to build up my collection of speech bubbles and by the way like I said you can add any kind of shape that you want and you can make as many subcategories as you want so Let's finish here. You understand the idea and how to do that. Here I have a picture and now you can see I can just drag one of these speech bubbles over here like this one for example and I can have the guy say something. Okay, I now hear you say, Olivio, come on, who, why would you need speech bubbles? Let's, let's talk about something useful here. Okay, so let's do that. <laughs> Because let's, who, who needs speech bubbles? Let's delete that. Okay, so what is a lot more useful? Because I thought about what am I going with an asset manager? What I'm going to do with that? And then I thought special effects. Yes, that's the thing you want to do with that because that's a lot more useful. So what you can use with uh, do with that is you can, and I already made a category for that. For example, you can use lens flares. You can use sparkly lights. You can use grunge maps. You can use paper textures. You can use picture frames. You can use whatever you want because there's a million billion different kinds of special effects. So this is a lot more useful for that. And the cool thing about that is because they are pixel based, you can just bulk import them and I will show you how to do that. So I will create a new subcategory. So you click again on these little three lines here. So this is the second way how to use it. Second way, secret source coming in a second. Stay tuned, please. Uh, so three little lines, we go to create subcategory and then we have again, it's called assets. We go down here and rename that and I will just rename it to test because this is just to, to, uh, to show you how that works. So there we go. We have this subcategory now. I will switch over to my layer and here already I have the same lens flares I have already imported. So you can find online, for example, this is from psdbox.com. You can find online collections of these JPEGs and you can select all of them and you click and you drag and you're done. Bam, that's wonderful. This is what I want. This is what I need. Super fast and easy workflow to get things that I want to have for my photo editing. And you can see now I can just use a lens flare and let's use, for example, this one. I drag it in here. It's on a black background. So I switch over to the blend mode screen and boom, I have a lens flare in my picture and the picture immediately looks a lot more interesting. You can see how this can enhance your workflow and you can make things super fast and super easy. And of course, you can use more lens flare if you want to. If you can go, okay, this is too small from the resolution. Uh, let's go with this one, for example. There we have one in red. Again, we go to screen and now we have a second lens flare in here. We can also go to arrange and say flip horizontal to uh, switch it over to the other side. And there we go. So this is super easy to do. And by the way, one thing you should look out for is sometimes they have a watermark in here. For example, here. Uh, okay, let's switch it over again so you can actually see what it says. Um, here, for example, it says psdbox.com. So you might want to put it in a way where you can't see that. And now that we have this here, I want to talk to you for a second about copyright because that's pretty important. So you have to look out for how you can actually use it. Some of them you can use for personal use. Some of them you can use for commercial use. Some of them you can use as often as you want. For example, if you go here to free pick, it says down here for the free pick license, free for personal and commercial use but you have to attribute them. So this means you have to put either on your print paper or in your link on the site or under my video, for example, you have to write freepick.com because this is the source where it comes from because otherwise you can get in really serious trouble, especially when you use it commercially. And here's another advice and this is really important. If you use pictures, for example, for unsplash.com because they are free, you can use it for as many projects as often as you want for different customers if you want to. But if you, for example, buy a picture on iStock, this is in most cases for one project for one customer and that's it. And if you want to do it for a second project, you have to buy it again. So be sure you look at the license agreements that you 
have so you can actually use it. Okay, enough about the boring lawyer stuff. Um, I'm going to delete this uh, group because I already have my lens flares in here. But now comes another part of the secret sauce. And this is a third way on how to build up your asset libraries in a very fast and very easy way. And this for this, I would um, suggest you go here to a new file and you go here for web and select the biggest size down here, open. And you want to go to document and transparent background. So you have this kind of checker background here. So this is not actually because you need it, but it makes it more visually um, like you can see where the picture ends. It's, it's a bit more easy. Okay, so what you want to do is you go, for example, here over to stock and you can either use any of these Unsplash, Paxels, Pixabay, whatever you want. And for example, let's go to Pixabay and I say, for example, Grunge. I enter Grunge and I will see a lot of Grunge pictures like this. Uh, let's let's draw, drag in here one. For example, you can see here now that it looks like this. It says the size. So look for some that have a big size. The size should be bigger than the pictures you usually work on or the, the size that you export. Otherwise, they can become pixelated. So uh, for example, I can now go in here and say um, new subcategory. Where is it? There it is. Okay, and I can say, for example, I rename that to Grunge Maps. Grunge Maps. And you can see how super easy and fast this is. So now I select this here and say Add from Selection. And then, of course, I can delete it. And I can go on and say, uh, what else are interesting Grunge Maps? What else do you like? Okay, this is super big. And by the way, this will export. This will import all of the picture, not just what you can see. So in this case, it's actually bigger than my... Um, than my, my uh, canvas. I can still go in here and say add from selection and there it is. And I can do this with as many grunge maps as I want. Another one of my followers uh, is for example Linda. She wrote me. She is all about um, frames, picture frames to put on her pictures digitally in Affinity Photo. You can do that too of course. You can go here. Let's create a new subcategory. You name it. And we say it's um, picture frames. Picture frames. There we go. So now we have picture frames. I can edit here and say picture frames. There we go. And you will see picture frames. They are white inside and then you have some picture frames. They are gray inside. And if they are gray inside, it mostly means that they are already cut out. And this is very useful for you. So let's put this over here. To import it takes a little bit. You can see this has a really huge resolution and you can see because of the checkerboard that it is actually transparent inside. So again, I can go in here and say add from selection and you can see that this is actually adding the full picture frame and not just what I can see here. Um, let's add two more and then I'm going to show you an example on how to use that. There's another one. Or let's add one more. That's good enough. Okay, there we go. Add from selection. So we have our picture frames and we can go over. I have here um, my other layers. Let's hide the stuff that we don't need. And um, for example, here's an example of a grunge map. So here we have a picture. Let's put this up here for a second. Here we have a picture of a sunset with some birds and with a grunge map because you might wonder what is a grunge map? How do you use that? So I found a grunge map that mixes well with this picture. I set it to soft light and when I turn it on, you can see it looks like that. So it adds a grunge effect like some scratches and some kind of effect that makes it a little bit grungy and dirty, but also artistic. And this can give your picture a very new life and a very new style and can make it really interesting. So if you like that, you can build up a collection collection of these kind of grunge effects and have a ton of fun with that. So um, another thing, like we said, we have created our picture frame. So I can now just drag my picture frame in here. It is a lot bigger than my picture. So I zoom out, resize that real quick. Then I zoom in again. And you can see here that I can simply put my picture frame over, for example, that part. And I can then crop also my picture to the frame like that and you can see that in a second you're done with your work and you have created a nice artistic looking picture you can still for example here because 
um, the frame is also the border of the picture. I can say that I want to go with an effect like um, outer shadow. And because this is cut in the middle, outer shadow is now showing up in the middle of the picture. So that's, you can see it in a second. If I make it like this, you can see, uh -huh, I get a little bit of shadow here. And this makes it a lot more realistic, like this is an actual frame and the picture is actually inside of the frame. And this is how you use the Asset Manager to build up interesting and creative libraries with special effects, with PNGs, with EPS, with vector files, with all kind of super interesting stuff uh, in a very personal and private way for you to enhance and speed up your workflow and make it a lot more fun. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have questions or suggestions for other tutorials, let me know. And by the way, check out my link for the assets that I have created for Affinity Photo uh, on my Gumroad page. Thank you very much and see you in the next tutorial. Bye!